Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Juancho here, uh, Computer Graphics. Uh, today we're going to talk about images. We're going to talk about how uh, we, everything that we do is about images. Uh, here's a link to uh, Michael Abrash, I uh, worked on Doom and Quake uh, in er, with John Carmack, some of the early pioneers. They were just building graphics from the grounds up. It was actually a really exciting time to be in computer graphics around then. Uh, now we have a very mature industry and we're talking about it. The, the nice uh, quote there is rasterization is the process of determining which pixels are inside a triangle and nothing more. Uh, that's uh, He worked on a project called Larrabee with Intel. Uh, the course, uh, the first assignment will be due next week and I'll get it out. To, it should be available by the time we get to the lecture. I'll get that out today. Uh, and then we're going to be doing some in-class activities that you might be able to finish as well. Uh, last class, we talked about the course introduction, the course structure, uh, and my decision to do this with WebGL. Uh, I had a great conversation with uh, a colleague of mine, Ben Watson, at, at University of Carolina at Chapel Hill. He's also doing it at WebGL. We're doing that so that we can focus on the computer graphics aspect because setting it all up is, is a lot easier. Uh, and uh, anyways, so that's what we're doing. Today we're going to talk about pixels, images, and image coordinate systems. Uh, the entire course, this entire course, is about making one image. Of course, we're going to do it many, many, many times, so we can have animation and stuff like that. But really, if you if you if you want to take something away from this course, take away this idea that we're taking a bunch of geometric data, and we'll get to that, and we're generating an image, and then we're coloring. Uh, that image such that we have beautiful uh, rendered images. So we're going to start with a bunch of points that define a bunch of triangles and then we're going to take those triangles, we're going to push them onto the screen like we talked before uh, and then we're going to fill those with colors and then we're going to, you know, maybe there's uh, transparency and stuff like that. So we're just going to do it all of that. The This is called a pipeline. So and you'll see many, many different uh, uh, images that portray these pipelines, uh, but it always is starts with vertices, transform vertices. The vertices have a relationship, and those, those relationships, which are typically triangles, are then uh, processed by the, the, the hardware, and then you get fragments, which are the little pieces inside the projected primitives and then those get shaded, and then you end up with pixels. So a fragment is just the part of a texture, and then there's uh, some program that does that. So what we're going to have is a vertex program that does a transformation. We'll do some geometric programs. So the, the yellow boxes that you see there are places where you're actually going to write code. You're going to write code to make these things happen. So let's go through this uh, pipeline. We'll go back to the rendering that uh, Mike Shaw put together. We have uh, a, a bunch of triangles and below it you see an element array and those define the triangles. So this is a hexagon of some sort um, and then uh, we're going to define that the first triangle is um, one, two, three. So that's this triangle right here that you see here and then we have three, two, four is another triangle, etc. Et so you'll see that uh, the, there's only five there, but there's more. And then uh, these things get rendered down. So we have one, two, three, three, two, four, four, two, seven, four, two, seven. So we have these three triangles in here. Our fundamental primitives are triangles. <laughs> it's Everything's made out of triangles. Uh, it's amazing what you can do with triangles. The even Gollum in Lord of the Rings, if you look at on the right hand side, you can see that there is uh, triangles here that define uh, the, the, the model. Uh, this is the cinematic one. If you look at it closely, there's a high degree, a, a large number of triangles. And in a game model, which is like real time, which is what we're going to be doing, it's a lower definition, that a lower resolution. That means that there's less triangles. And that means that the hardware, this process that we have here, is going to be 
going through. Because if you look at this, we're, we're, we're actually processing all of these triangles. So the more triangles we have, the more time it's going to take. And we'll come back to that later. A point is a vertex. It's either, uh, it's a position in space uh, in two dimensions. It's a, it's a two-dimensional uh, vertex. And in three-dimensional, it's a x, y, z. So x, and well, you can think of x, y, it's on your, on your table, and z, the height above it. Um, but as I showed last class with that uh, open SCAD uh, rendering of a, of a sphere, uh, if you make your triangle small enough, it starts to resemble a smooth surface. A line segment is a connection between two points, uh, and this gives us a relationship between them. And you will be doing uh, a wire rendering uh, in uh, wireframe rendering. I showed you that in, in one of the uh, the preview of the assignments that you're going to be doing. And a triangle. So now we've gotten to our little triangle here. Uh, if we have three vertices, we can make three line segments, and then we can form a triangle. And so what we can do then is we can fill in the pixels. So on the right-hand side of this image, you see an animation where we're processing this triangle one scan line at a time. A scan line is on your computer graph, on your computer, on your display, you have lines of pixels or, or little dots. And if you look at it with a looking glass, you can actually see them. Uh, and so what we're doing here is we're going from the bottom of the triangle, and we're just looking at all of the pixels here. We're saying, are you inside the triangle or are you not outside the triangle? And any triangle that any pixel that's inside the triangle is being colored blue. This is the middle part of it. We we establish this relationship between these um, points to form triangles, which are then going to give us uh, all of the information that we need. Well, we still, we still need to define a camera and lights and, and textures, but for the purpose of the, the shape of this, of this object, uh, triangles are what is going to help us get there. So, the mathematical properties of a triangle um, is you have three vertices, three line segments, and the three interior angles add up to 180 degrees. Uh, the, uh, any three points define uh, a plane. So that means that uh, you know that it's flat within that triangle. So if you project it, uh, th those points within that triangle are always going to be inside the triangle. So it doesn't matter how you look at a triangle, they define a planar space or a planar surface is perfectly flat. Ah, but uh, what about... Uh, how do we use these? Well, you can generate a lot of them. Uh, on the left here, um, you will be able to look at the triangles. So on this particular uh, terrain rendering here, uh, we're flipping between a fully colored version uh, where we've done a whole bunch of uh, processing of these triangles to make them look solid. But the actual position of this terrain, you can define it. It's on the wireframe that you see here. This is a... a, a, a a character from a, a game. Uh, you can see uh, the wireframe here, uh, and you can see that it's made up of 1,500 triangles. Uh, and that's basically what modelers do, is they go through and they generate these meshes and they paint them. Um, and in this particular image here, there's an awful lot of processing. So you have this, uh, if we can go through. So there's the wireframe, you can see all of the triangles. And there we add some lighting. We'll talk about that. And then we talk about detail lighting. Uh, and then we're going to have a lit image. And so you can see this highly uh, visually compelling image uh, that's based on a bunch of triangles. So again, triangles are the basis of everything that we do in computer graphics. Uh, all of the hardware that we have is optimized to process triangles. Uh, remember that last class, we had that little chap that could process triangles. That is exactly what we're doing in this course. Then the final part is how do we put these images into the screen? Well, the screen is reading um, color values from memory, and we call that the frame buffer. The frame is the frame uh, that comes from the movie industry where you had frames, 24 frames per second. Uh, and so in computer graphics, they adopted that term. 
and the frame is the representation, the numerical representation um, in um, the, the numerical representation that the hardware then takes and converts into light that displays it on the screen. And I haven't uh, uh, fixed this here, so let's go fix this here so that it's actually correct. Um, so we're going to actually, uh, uh, we're going to do this in, in TypeSurf, of course. Um, but uh, really what we're, the, the whole point here is not so much to learn TypeScript or C++, but to understand the, the, the core components of what computer graphics are. Images are made up of pixels. And so the first assignment, uh, one of the first assignments you'll see is, is actually processing images because we use images. We, we produce images and we use images and we use images to texture things and stuff like that. And you can see that here, uh, the, this person here has got 1500 triangles, uh, but there's clearly way more information on that. So that's done with the texture. You can see the texture map up here. This is the, the, the texture that the artist has generated that is going to be pasted onto these triangles to make it look like it's far more sophisticated. And you also uh, do that. I showed you that in, 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 the, in the assignment, uh, in the preview last week. And actually, I'm going to show you the, the preview of assignment four uh, today. Uh, and you'll see, uh, or on Thursday when we have a lecture, uh, and you'll see that uh, how you can make some of these images look incredible. And we're back. Images, textures, and sprites. So what we want to talk about now is a little bit about images. Uh, in particular, um, we are going to do an assignment where we're going to manipulate images and pixels just so you can understand them. Uh, in general, as a computer graphics programmer, you use established uh, libraries for uh, loading images and manipulating images and tools and stuff like that. But it's important that you actually do understand what an image is and what pixels are. So how do we store color on a computer? We store it as an image or a surface. Uh, what we need to know is kind of the size and the color of each individual pixel. A pixel stands for a picture element and a texel is a texture element, and a voxel is a voxel element. You'll see, you'll see those terms. Uh, how we came up with the X in there, don't know, but that's what it is. Uh, there's a whole plethora of image formats. There is so many. Uh, in fact, there was one point, there was a book that was about this thick that was published about all the image formats. Um, you don't have to worry about it that much. Whatever you, whatever you're working as a computer graphics programmer, there'll be an accepted set of image formats that you use in your company, your studio. Uh, these are some of the ones that uh, exist: JPEG, PNG, PPN was one of the original ones. We're going to play a little bit with PPM. Uh, just it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter which image format you have. They all have their own different purposes. Uh, and uh, at the end of the day. Each one of these images expands to an image that you can show on the screen. So what is a pixel? A pixel is a picture element, and it is a position on a 2D space, uh, and it is a, um, a value that you're going to color. So if I, if I gave you like a mathematical paper, and I told you, and I gave you seven crayons, and I said in you know color by numbers, uh, and I put a, a number in each one of those squares. You would pick that crayon up, and you would draw with that. Uh, in this particular world, uh, our crayons are RGB values because the way that we display color on a, on a monitor is we have a red, a green, and a blue uh, color, and those uh, actually uh, allow our eyes to see a whole variety. So the basic unit is a pixel. Uh, a pixel, you could have a one by one pixel or you could have a 4K uh, image, which is 3,840 3, by 2160. Um, they're getting bigger and bigger. We now have 5K and people are talking about 8K video streaming, et cetera, et cetera. But basically what, it, what, what that number 4K is talking about the number of uh, 
come with the, the size of the pixel. 4K doesn't mean 4,000 pixels. It's actually a lot more than that. This is like roughly 4K across the bottom. Um, and then you had kind of your, your full HD. We had all these other standard definition was when I started doing computer graphics. And now we have high, actually when I started doing computer graphics, uh, my first computer had, uh, I think it was 200 by by 100, 200 by 100 pixels or something. It really wasn't a graphics uh, computer at all. Uh, but yeah, anyways, this is this is what what resolution means. Uh, and now we've also uh, uh, adopted a kind of different uh, aspect ratio. So an aspect ratio refers to uh, the the ratio between uh, the x and the y size of the image. Uh, Here's a uh, representation in C++, but we'll, we'll do the same thing in TypeScript. Uh, a pixel can be represented as uh, a bunch of numbers, and those numbers are going to be used by the hardware to render. So you could uh, define it as a bunch of 8-bit integers. Uh, there's all these things. Uh, here we have float. Uh, we have 8-bit uh, int. Uh, here we're going to store RGBA, uh, and A is alpha. Uh, alpha, you, we, we, you'll see it when we, we, we try to put images one on top of the other. The alpha tells you how much of the image below is allowed to come through to the front. So a PPM image format. Um, it's an old uh, format that was uh, put around a long time ago by a frustrated programmer because there's all these image formats and he couldn't send images by email, et cetera, et cetera. So he wrote this particular um, image format, which is just text, uh, made some really large uh, files, and it became the standard. Uh, there's two uh, formats. One is the human readable one, which is P3, which is the one that we will play with. Uh, and then there will be um, uh, P6, which is uh, kind of not human readable, it uses a little bit less memory on your disk, uh, but but they're both essentially the same idea. So the first number is a magic number or a magic text, it's P3. Um, you'll see this in a lot of Unix uh, type of programs where the first, uh, first few pieces of data in that file tell you what kind of file that is. Um, so, it, you know, it, it could be that you have a file that isn't called PPM, uh, but you know that you open it and you say open P3, you go, I wonder if it's a PPM file. Uh, so in the, 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 the PPM file format starts off with that magic number, and then it tells you how many pixels, uh, sorry, how many columns you have, and then how many rows. So this particular uh, image has four columns and four, uh, sorry, four rows and four columns. So four columns and four rows. So we have, uh, it's, it's X and Y. Um, and then uh, because in, in those days we were, they were trying to store, you know, so not all uh, devices could display the full range of uh, values. Uh, there is a number here, 15, which says this is the maximum value that any one of these values are gonna take. And then the rest of the numbers in this file represent the pixels. So the first pixel is going to be uh, it's going to be a black pixel because it's got zero red, zero green, zero blue, and then black, 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 and then we have here 15. This is the maximum, so this is going to be red, green, blue, uh, whatever color that is. I, I can't do those numbers in my head. Um, and then you have, uh, so I just realized that um, Mike had these things, so uh, whatever. So we'll go through there. Uh, these are the different pixels. Uh, and then there's another uh, uh, format, which is the P6 format. Uh, and it has, again, uh, it's going to have a P6. It's going to have your X and your Y uh, resolution. And then it's going to have the maximum value of each of those, but the rest of it is going to be in binary, so you're not going to be able to see it. Um, you're not going to be able to see see the uh, the images in an editor. Uh, it'll look just like a whole bunch of stuff. You'll you'll get all, all sorts of warnings. Um, the uh, P6 
piece, if you're generating images uh, and you need to go in and look at the pixels, sometimes using P3 uh, is, is a good way to do it. Uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, tools for PPMs on, on Linux. You can also install them with Mac, with uh, Rook. Uh, there's uh, other uh, extensions of PPM. You can go look on the Wikipedia page for PPM. Uh, it's an old, it's an old um, image format, um, but it's there, and we're going to use it as, as our first assignment, just to kind of as a forcing function to get you to think about images. Uh, and understand you know, how we go about manipulating images. And we're back with a TypeScript example. So you define the class, uh, you're going to store the width, the height, and the color value. Uh, and uh, But the most important thing is you need to be able to uh, store your, your, your raw data. And in this particular case, we're just going to use uh, a JavaScript for TypeScript, a type uh, unsigned integer 8 array. Uh, and that data is that's what we're going to put the pixel. And you'll we'll see that in the assignment. Images take up a lot of space, uh, so we want to compress them. We want to make uh, use less numbers, have smaller file spaces. Uh, there is a whole bunch of work on uh, image compression. Uh, we're not going to delve into that in this course. We're going to be dealing with full images. Uh, but just so you know, there are two types of compression, lossless and lossy. Uh, lossless means that you, whatever, however you compress it, you are going to expand it and you'll get exactly the same file back. Uh, lossy means that you're going to get a file that when a human looks at it, it looks the same but there are some information missing. And in this particular example, you, if you look around the, the back legs of this little dragonfly, uh, you'll see that there's very clear definition here, and it kind of gets lost. And you can also see that in some of the, the textures on these pieces of uh, wood or whatever it's standing on, uh, you'll see that. So we're just going to store raw values. We're not going to do anything fancy, but there is a whole bunch of information. And you may come up, or you may come across these terms, lossless and lossy, and now you know what they are. Um, there's um, a lot of information on images and formats and decoders and video. If you've done any sort of video recording, there's a whole bunch of different types of representation. Uh, there's different arrangements of color formats. You see things like this. What this means is that RGB, are for, that, that every piece of color is stored as RGB, and five bits are stored for uh, red, and six for green, and five for blue. Uh, it turns out that our eyes are actually a lot more sensitive to green uh, because we live in a green world. Uh, so we evolved to have eyes that are a little bit more sensitive there. So adding a little bit of extra information to Jen makes sense. But again, we're not going to be delving into this. We're going to be uh, we're going to basically go be using this format: R eight bits for R, eight bits for green, and eight bits for blue, and that's what we're going to be using. Uh, there is another format that's very popular: it's TGA. Um, it, it's a little bit more powerful. We're not using it for this course, but it, it is there. Uh, it's basically another uh, full representation of an image. Uh, you can see some C, some C code there of how you would add uh, information to uh, a file, but we're not going to deal with that, but it is there. So our TGA and PPM image is good enough, but, but why, why would we ask anything? Um, and, and what I want you to do is I, I want you to just stop the video right now. Uh, I'm going to stop for about 15 seconds. And I'm going to ask you, can you actually see something different between these three slides? Now, you're watching it on a video. Uh, if you're watching on a video, go to the slides that accompany this video and pop up this, this uh, particular slide, this slide 42. Uh, and just have to see if, if you can see what, what, what is the difference about this. So what we have here is that the first image has a high dynamic range, uh, but some of the pixels are too bright to tell the difference. That means that uh, the colors that the image store are, are, are the, the range is bigger than what the monitor can display. Uh, so maybe your, your monitor can display 256 levels of red, but this image has 500 or 1,000. Uh, and so, in the second one, 
uh, what the artist has done. They've basically darkened the image, and we'll do this. We'll do a very, very primitive version of this in um, in our assignment, uh, where you'll darken an image. Uh, but the third image is uh, looking a wider range. Uh, and but what we're doing is they they do a nonlinear mapping uh, into uh, the monitor space such that you get detail, more details in the shadow and the bright ones don't blow out. So in particular, you see that uh, you get kind of a little bit more detail here, here. Uh, you know, this basically, all of these pixels here are, are white. They stay white even if you darken them. But in this particular image here, you see that there's some more subtleties around here. So that actually um, uh, allows the artist to transform the image in such a way that you get the, the full uh, kind of a, a more realistic uh, sense of what that image is even if you can't display it. And there's a whole bunch of human perception uh, that goes into that um, of, of how you can make things look like they're, there's more colors there than they are because of the way that our eyes perceive uh, colors. But for this course we're not going to be doing that. Uh, there is uh, uh, there's these uh, different formats uh, called high definition rendering, uh, high dynamic range, high dynamic range. I mean, uh, and this means that you can have images that have like ten thousand levels of of, um, of of light, and then there's a way of mapping it over onto your hardware such that you get more information. And in this particular example, you can see that if you have a high high dynamic range rendering. In this particular image, you get these uh, cloud details up here. Uh, if you don't have high dynamic range on, it just all blows out, right? So, you, so there's some processing that's going on there. There's some magic. Uh, this this particular device here can't show more colors. So what we've done is we've transformed the range of the colors in such a way that you can actually see more details. You see, you see a little bit more details in the shadows, uh, and definitely you see more more details in, in the, uh, the high, uh, the brighters. And then there's a whole bunch of uh, uh, pixels. So we uh, we store pixels between 0 and 1. Um, and we, uh, they're, so, uh, they're stored in some range. Uh, and what we can do is, uh, there's this uh, system called Open uh, EXR uh, that allows you to map them into such a way that you can do it. Again, we're not making the monitor render more images. We're manipulating the monitor, the image, such that when the human sees it on the monitor, they see more details. Um, Industrial Light and Magic uh, is a uh, a company that was started to do animation. Uh, it's a division of film of Lucasfilm, uh, which was bought by Walt Disney, uh, and they they basically go back to when Star Wars was made, and they really they've done a lot of fantastic movies. Uh, there's a lot of uh, actually a lot of my colleagues from when I was in grad school went and worked there, and were uh, significant in developing all of that stuff. So, RTGA and PPM good enough. So we go back to here, we talked about, we asked the question, uh, we showed that, you know, you can actually have more dynamic range, you can be in all this exciting stuff, but for the purposes of this course, uh, here's a reference to uh, OpenEXR, it's a solution to use a new image format, you can go look at that, uh, there's more information here, uh, and a lot of this was was uh, championed by these these powerhouses, industrial light, and light uh, industrial light and magic, uh, as they were trying to produce computer animations to show on the screens in theaters, which actually have quite limited dynamic range, uh, and so a lot of that information, that research was there. But for the purpose of this course, uh, it is going to be uh, uh, enough for what we do. We're going to focus on uh, getting images up on the on. on the screen uh, and animating them and getting scene graphs and building kind of an in interesting 3D world in which you can interact. That's the focus of this. So um, you want some PPM images to um, to uh, 
to, to play with. Uh, you're going to be doing an assignment where you're going to load PPM images. Um, so how do you create a PPM image? Uh, well, one of the things I'd like you all to do is to install GIMP on your computer. It's, it's a free, um, it's a kind of a free uh, version uh, drawing program. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's open source, it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, but what it does allow us to do is um, export images in a variety of formats. So if you, if you want to export uh, any, any image, uh, you can export it. Uh, just go into GIMP and do export and export it as, and just put the PPM file here, you know, export as, put PPM as the file ending, uh, and then it will ask you, um, do you want to do it as raw? Raw would be P6, and ASCII is P3, and that's what you want to do, P3, and then you'll get the image and you can go look at it and look at the numbers, etc. Image coordinate system. So, we, we, we talked about a pixel uh, having a location, and I told you about me giving you a piece of paper with squares on it, numbers. But I need to reference those particular squares. So it's a 2D array. So what we're going to do is we're just going uh, to adopt a convention that uh, the 0, 0 image is in the upper left-hand side of the image. Uh, this is just a convention that's been adopted. Uh, and you know, so the, the width is the number of columns you have, and the height is the number of rows that you have, uh, and that's what you have. So the pixel zero zero is in the upper left hand corner, and the pixel uh, max width and max uh, uh, width and height is in the lower right hand corner. Um, we're going to look at how to parse an image format. Uh, one of the things is that we have to know what we're doing uh, when coordinates, right? So, it, and, and it's important to just kind of think through the 2D coordinates because we're going to get to 3D coordinates and that gets a little bit more complicated. But this whole idea of representing data, you did that in your discrete math class, uh, hopefully. Uh, but if, 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 you, if you can't remember it, the basic idea is you have some sort of center, an origin, uh, and then you define things within that space as to how far do you travel in X and then you turn and how far do you travel in Y. So to get to this point, you go five in X and four. We also have negative. So uh, we've adopted the convention that positive X goes to the right and negative X goes to the left and positive Y goes up and negative Y goes down. This is all revision. This should all be uh, obviously, uh, but this is what you're used to. Now, What's interesting is that the image data has gone and flipped that all on the screen. Now, why, why did that happen? Why, why was that like that? Well, the reason that that happened was because monitors start displaying their images in the upper left-hand, the, 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 the old cathode ray tube monitors started displaying their image up here. They would display the first row then the second row, et cetera, et cetera. So the, so the first row is zero, zero, zero is the row number, and it goes like that. So it, it is a bit of a flip. Uh, so image data coordinates, so here we go. Uh, this is what an image looks like. Uh, we've got it uh, kicking down like that. This is a convention. It was just adopted this way. Uh, you can actually uh, go back and, and, and talk to the person uh, that was that did scan conversion for TVs, and if they had started scanning from the bottom left and gone up, then we would have had a standard coordinate, but we don't. That's just the way it is. Okay, and we'll pause there, and then we'll come back to the recording. And we're back. TypeScript programming. Uh, we're going to make an image class. Let's go through this quickly, then we'll talk about 2D arrays, and then that should probably wrap it up for this particular uh, preview lecture. Okay, so let's see. We're going to go here. we we'll start the slideshow, and then we go there. Uh, we're going to talk about, like I said, we're going to build a, a, a TypeScript class. This is actually your assignment. Uh, so we are going to define classes. It's the same as every other language. 
Python, Java, C++, they're all kind of the same thing. You want to have some variables inside that you are going to use. Uh, you have essentially, it's a container for data, and you have things that manipulate that data. So you have attributes, which are the data, and you have behaviors, which are the code. Another way of thinking of that is that you have uh, a name for this particular type of object, and then you can have multiple of them, and they have member functions, and they have member variables, attributes, and behaviors. So how do you instantiate that? You'll see this in the code that you get for the assignment. Uh, you ask for a new object of that, and then you have access to a place where you can put your data in, and then you have access to functions that allow you to manipulate that data and retrieve data from that container. We like classes because it allows us to uh, couple data with code that is related to that data without having to think about where is that code somewhere else. It's, it's all tied together. So we've talked about the class. Uh, you'll be doing that, and uh, it's that's a re reminder. Uh, our, our canvas is uh, holding is, is an image data. We need to hold this data for these pixels, and we need to be able to s respond when someone says, hey, what is the value at 100, 100? We need to be able to uh, give a um, look at it. We did a, a PPM class. Uh, this was a PPM class. This is PPM here. PPM. And then we do the job. Okay. Um, each pixel is going to have an RGB value, and the red, green, and blue have 8 bits, so they range from 0 to 255. Uh, we could, uh, in C++, or you would see something like this. Uh, in TypeScript, you could build something like this. Uh, but for the purposes of what we're doing, um, we're actually going to be using this uh, uint array. So what I've defined here is like an individual pixel, or I can set RGB, uh, but I can also get the data out in a uh, uh, unsigned 8-bit array, which is what we're going to be providing and feeding into uh, our graphics engine. Just a reminder, if you look at the, if you watch this video for a bit, you can see how RGB uh, works. Um, so we're going to, we're learning some uh, TypeScript and we are going to be representing the RGB uh, and then we need to know how to uh, modify pixels in a 2D array. So 2D arrays. Uh, we've looked at images and pixels and we think about 2D arrays of pixels, but what is a 2D array? Remember, memory is just a 1D array and you can't actually, you know, you just access memory by ad uh, address. Um, so what, how do we do this in 2D? So I'll, uh, you can't have 2D arrays, so all the software you write uses 1D arrays to think about it conceptually as a, a 2D array. Um, so if I define this uh, uh, array of arrays in TypeScript, uh, you can we'll see we'll see how we can take this 2D representation um, and uh, use it to think how that goes into like a 1D representation. So uh, the code is structured to look like it's a 2D array. Uh, and when you look at this image here, uh, this particular thing here is the zeroth element of the zeroth row. So basically, um, oops. Um, this 0, 0, 0, 1. So z the first coordinate refers to which of, so, so you have an array here. The first coordinate picks out that first array. So the, the first, so, so 0, 0 takes, grabs, the first 0 grabs this one, and the second 0 grabs this one. So 0, 0 has a value of x. So conceptually, this is what we have built, but actually in memory, it looks like this. Let's have a look at, uh, again, how do we do this? So we have array of 2D, uh, row times width plus offset. Uh, so let's, let's have, um, we have five rows, five rows, and they have three elements per row. Um, 
We have five rows and three elements per row. That's what we're looking for. Um, row times width, but basically uh, the position of your uh, object, you can actually uh, identify it as a single dimensional array and offset, right? So uh, if you're uh, trying to read it into memory, you can just do it this way. Uh, or if you're trying to write bytes into memory, which you'll be doing in your PPM file, you'll need to do something like this. So um, this one, uh, remember we had the 2D array and the first, this first number here picked out the first one uh, and the second one. So here we're actually going to uh, map those two numbers uh, into uh, the, the value. So you have an offset, which is actually your column and your row. So you have column and row. So row 0 equals 0 times 3 plus offset. So if my offset was 1, then I would pick this one out here. If I have row 1, then I'm picking these values here. So the offset ranges between 0, 1, and 2. And so we can see this and go down and so it goes through there. Um, and so, yeah. So array, if, so when you are, um, oops, so the uh, offset identifies how far over in that particular row you go. Um, so if I want to set an array value, which you'll be doing in your PPM uh, um, processor, you're going to be using math something like this. So array 2, 1 is equivalent to array 2 of width plus 1, right? And now a summary of all of this stuff. So in languages like TypeScript, JavaScript, Python, C++, they allow us to address an array with two sets of square brackets, most of them. Um, but there is an equivalence such that we can actually do the math ourselves, which is what the compiler is doing underneath it. So in the example that we just went through, we use row and width plus offset. Now, if you think about it carefully, you want to, if you want to really visualize this as a 2D array, you want to think about row and column. So what I typically would write would be row times width uh, plus column, and then that will give me the uh, offset. So if you have set pixel column uh, row, uh, then you would use this math inside that to, uh, to, do, to get the, the, the data back out again. And now, a summary of all of this stuff. So in languages like TypeScript, JavaScript, Python, C++, they allow us to address an array with two sets of square brackets, most of them. Um, but there is an equivalence such that we can actually do the math ourselves, which is what the compiler is doing underneath it. So in the example that we just went through, we use row and width plus offset. Now, if you think about it carefully, you want to, if you want to really visualize this as a 2D array, you want to think about row and column. So what I typically would write would be row times width uh, plus column, and then that will give me the uh, offset. So if you have set pixel column uh, row, uh, then you would use this math inside that to, uh, to, do, to get the, the, the data back out again.